Yeah, awesome. Well, I, I just want to say, guys, I want to say thank you so much for this opportunity. I really, I really mean that. Uh, you know, I'm starting up my new community, the Metaverse Beginnings, leading up to Metaverse Mastery. And I got my first member today. So uh, I think it had something to do with uh, the billboard. So thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Thanks. So, yeah, we will be um, starting in about two minutes. Uh, okay. And Ian, what software are you using for that virtual cam switching thing you're doing? I love it. Yeah, it's Thank great. You. I I'm a an Apple guy, so eCam, it's E C A M M, uh, is the best software for virtual cam on uh, Macs. You know, the other one is OBS, which is good on Macs, but it's better on PC. Yeah, uh, eCam's great. It just becomes one of your cameras. You, I could do anything. I do videos. I do uh, uh, podcasts. Everything I could I want to do, you could just broadcast through your your whatever Google Meet, Google Hangouts, uh, Zoom, whatever. So. That way I control it all and I don't have to deal with different, you know, use cases for each of the programs. Thank you. Yeah, I'm also Apple user. So thanks for recommendation because actually I cannot do much with obvious on my Mac. So thanks for recommendation. Yeah, of course. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and drop off the Zoom okay. and thanks, have a great Carl. talk, Ian. Bye. All right, we'll do. Yeah, it's... It's actually very uh, interesting experience that today now, now we are doing conference inside the Zoom and Zoom is inside the Metaverse Decentraland. So yeah, I'm so I know. It's even yeah. more so. I'm doing I'm doing the video through eCam, sending it to Zoom. <laughs> Zoom is sending it to Decentraland. <laughs> so crazy to think about it, right? So a couple of years ago, if somebody would tell, told me you should do facilitation or speaking in Decentraland inside the Zoom, yeah. I wouldn't believe it, right? I would have laughed. But yeah. now this is becoming reality, and I'm happy to be part of it. Uh, and and uh, yeah, I hope these two days will be very interesting, and we get some uh, amazing value. And um, that's what our metaverse is for, not only for the games, but for serious stuff and having some amazing discussions, questions. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. I'm, I'm, so, I'm such a big proponent on the use cases for the metaverse. I, I think that it exists, yeah. even if we, let's just say we threw out blockchain tomorrow, the metaverse would still come up because the 3D internet is really where the future is for people consuming online. So that's why I've worked so hard to, to build this community, to teach people how to make money right now in the metaverse uh, before it gets too late. Sure. sure. Okay. So let's uh, get slowly started. First all of right. all, Yes, thanks everybody for joining in. This is the first time uh, we are hosting vendor conference in Decentraland. Uh, thanks to Carl Fravel for putting this up. This is We're going to have amazing two days, today and tomorrow. And uh, we will have amazing keynote speakers. We will have panel discussions and also amazing vendors uh, showcasing their products and services. So please join in, listen to us uh, and... I will be waiting your amazing questions. And first, our amazing uh, speaker, you can uh, already see him here, is uh, Ian uh, Corzine. Um, yes, Ian Corzine, so, yes. Yes, Ian Corzine. So uh, he will be uh, talking about 10 NFT no-nos, which is amazing title. <laughs> and I will let Ian uh, talk about um, his keynote speech. And um, after that, we will have some opportunity to have some questions and answers. So please, Ian, welcome to the stage. Thank you, Nodo. I really appreciate the opportunity. Let's get right into it. $69 million for this. You know, before people sail to MetaCOVID, the most expensive NFTs weren't even close to this amount. Now, why 69 million? Do you think that there's something more to this story? There is, and in today's talk, I'm gonna tell you some more real life NFT stories, you might say NFT disasters, so that I can show you what not to do when creating, buying, and selling NFTs. First thing I wanna talk about is the world of evolving apes. <laughs> oh, shoot. It was early October, 2021, and Mike had a huge problem. He bought 20 evolved ape NFTs at the September 24th mint for over $10,000. A week later, his investment was worthless. He lost $10,000 in a day. Now, what happened? 
Well, little beknownst to Mike, uh, the project founder, Evil Ape, who you can see right here in this image, <laughs> he looks a little evil as, as it is. Um, he advertised this Evolved Apes NFT project in the summer of 2021. He said that from the money he would receive from the mint of the 10,000 new tokens, he would create this awesome video game where you would own an Evolved Ape and then you could fight your Evolved Apes against each other and have fun and get prizes and actually increase the value of your NFT. So Mike and a lot of, I would say thousands of other excited NFT investors, they spent millions on Evolved Apes uh, in September of 2021. However, a week later, Evil Ape and the Evolved Ape Twitter and the website just disappeared along with $2.7 million from the Evolved Ape bank account. Now, <laughs> the lessons here are so many. If you are an NFT developer, once you make promises about features of the product, in this case, the Evolved Ape NFT, and investors rely on these promises when they buy your product, you must deliver on these promises. In this case, Evil Ape did not deliver on his promises, and as a result, he breached a contract with the investors, and He's going to be sued if he hasn't already. Now, he could also have been sued for misrepresentation if it could be proved that he never really intended to deliver on the promise of making the video game with four evolved apes. Now, evidence of this is, can come from a lot of different sor sources like a Discord message or a text or an email or even little circumstantial evidence that, you know, he charged a certain amount of money for the NFTs, but the actual recovery from the NFTs probably wouldn't have been enough to allow him to pay developers to build this video game. So this is an example of an NFT rug pool. There are There is very little law on NFT rug pools right now throughout the world. There are some states, uh, namely New York in America, where they're working on a law to punish NFT rug pools, which would mean that you wouldn't just be sued for an NFT rug pool, but you could go to jail. Now, speaking of jail, could that be where Metacoven is going? You may remember that Metacoven was the guy that spent $69 million on Beeple's Everydays in the March of uh, 2021. Now, why the heck did he do that? What do you think? I think it was a scheme from the start. Before Everydays sale and the related hype that went along with it, Metacoven started a company called Metapurse. You may or may not have heard of Metapurse. The company bought before this whole big deal, everydays and all the news and all that stuff. The company bought $2.2 million worth of Beeple uh, NFTs. They bought a bunch of virtual land, including islands, I think even in Central Land, where we're at now, and a Blau music so uh, soundtrack. Now, the business purpose of Meta Metapurse was to democratize expensive NFTs. In other words, give people an opportunity to own famous and expensive NFTs uh, in a fractionalized fashion. Now, Metapurse, what they did is they took in many millions of dollars when they issued what are called B20 tokens, right before it was announced that MetaCovid was gonna buy every days. And I may have forgot to mention, but did, did you know that Beeple himself was heavily invested in Metapurse before the everyday sale took place? That's when the Securities and Exchange Commission got interested in Metapurse. Now, the Securities and Exchange Commission is a government agency in America, which basically ensures the fairness of securities trades. Oopsies. So the SEC got involved. They were mostly interested in this B20 token. They were saying, huh, this sounds suspiciously like what I would refer to or what they would refer to as an investment contract. That is an, a, a deal between a person who's proponent of a digital asset or an, an, an asset in general and investors. There is a contract there where if the investors buy in, that the founders are going to do their best to increase the value of the underlying asset. So they were saying this, they were thinking that this B20 token of Metapurse was this investment contract and should be regulated by the SEC. Now, if a investment is regulated by the SEC, it is a big deal. You need thousands, if not millions of dollars for compliance. Disclosures, filings, you have additional legal duties as a result of issuing a security that's regulated by the SEC. 
Now, what ultimately happened to this, uh, what I call the uh, meta-COVID mess, is that no one has been charged yet with any wrongdoing because there's this dispute about whether or not a fractionalization NFT project constitutes a security that could be regulated by the SEC. But let me just tell you, as a lawyer, as experienced in blockchain, Web3, metaverse, and having done this for over 20 years, not blockchain, but being a lawyer for 20 years, I know that NFT fractionalization at some point is going to become a security and it's going to be regulated by the SEC. Now, so this is the lesson you should learn. If you are one of those businesses right now who is thinking, boy, I would like to fractionalize existing expensive assets, or what I really would like to do is issue an amazing NFT that people can own in part. Uh, just understand that I think in the future, in the next, I would say the next year, fractionalization of NFTs is going to be regulated by the SEC. And that means you're going to have to have additional costs, additional compliance measures to comply with if you're going to be in that business. So I would say if I were making a recommendation, which I do often for a council NFT uh, project creators, I say, why don't you keep fractionalization out of the pie right now? We don't know what the law is going to be. But the law probably will be that it will be regulated by the SEC, and that will be something that's going to cost a lot of money down the road. Now, if you don't take this advice and you per persist down the SEC route and you don't have the money for SEC compliance, your project's going to fail. And another way your project could fail, that's through what I call and what most people call <laughs> wash trading. You know, in January of this year, the NFT marketplace Looks Rare began airdropping Looks token, L-O-O-K, tokens to wallets who are trading a lot of NFTs in their marketplace. Now, how it worked was this. The more NFTs you traded, the more Looks tokens you would get. So, naturally, humans being well, who they are, they tried to game the system. And they attempted to do it by using the by using the technique of wash trading. Now, at least in the stock market, wash trading is the illegal practice of repeatedly buying and selling to yourself a asset. And again, in the stock market context, this is entirely illegal. You're doing this to manipulate the price of a digital asset in the market, and it's fraud and it's wrong. Now, I'll give you an example uh, in the NFT context. Let me switch the slide here. Let's say you were going to buy a cyber frog for 25 soul, which in today's you know, USD is about $1,000. You know, to wash trade it, what you do is you buy it, bring it to your wallet, you create another wallet, and then you would sell that cyber frog to the other wallet for, let's say, 26 soul. Then you'd create another wallet and you'd sell that cyber frog to the next wallet for 27, eventually going back and forth, buying and selling until you, let's say, raise the price to 30 soul. That is an attempt to increase the uh, the value of the of the underlying NFT in this case the cyber frog in the market fraudulently. Now, in the context of looks rare, there were people who were doing that. They were obviously trying to raise the value of their NFTs, but they were also trying to get these dang looks token. Back when it when they uh, brought up this program in uh, I think it was January of twenty twenty two I believe. Um, looks tokens were like trading for like four bucks for four USD. Now they're about 23 cents. But what, what these people were doing is they were, they don't even care so much about the wash. They were just trying to get these looks tokens. And they were hoping, of course, that there is a gas fee. There is a transaction fee when they're buying and selling, but they were hoping that that gas and transaction fee was less than the value of the looks token. So they could be making money by just wash trading. Apparently, you know, looks rare, this NFT marketplace kind of like this. Again, they prided themselves on being an NFT marketplace that had the biggest trade volume. And also, you got to remember that all these wash trades, they're making transaction fees. So they kind of were encouraging it. And I will tell you this, that right now, even right now, uh, you go to looks rare, I think it's .io or .com, you can see that if you do the more NFT trading you do, the more looks token you will get. I think that right now it's not as big a deal because looks tokens value is like I said, 23 cents uh, in today's money USD. People don't really care, you know, so much about the looks token. Um, and also the biggest problem with this wash trading is that NFT projects themselves have faced disaster. What happens is when they're, when uh, people, you know, you know how the NFT world is, is so close. Uh, when people start understanding that there's wash trading going on in a given project, 
they get out of the project right away. Once trust is broken on an NFT project, it's done. There are so you know NFT projects are a dime a dozen. There's so many out there. So what's ha- what people have seen, especially when it comes to looks rare, is these NFT projects with all these wash trades. These people trying to get these looks token. And the NFT project goes down because people are like, dude, I'm not going to do this. I don't even know what the real price is of the NFT. I don't know if it's been washed a hundred times or, or one time. So that's seen the collapse. And then of course, there's also the thought that at some point in time, wash trading is definitely going to be made illegal as it is with stock trading. More and more NFT investors, large ones are staying away from the practice of wash trading, even if they just want to get tokens from it because they're afraid of falling into a future legal trap. Now, speaking of legal traps, I fell into one recently myself, and I'm a guy that, you know, I would like to think of myself as the educated in the blockchain, the Web3, the lawyer, but I fell into the trap of a wallet clear. Now, people who know me know that I love Catalina Whales. That's my favorite NFT, um, digital art NFT, that is. And earlier this year, I was able to get a really rare one. And I can even show it to you right here. <laughs> I don't know if you can see it on the screen here. I have a framed picture of it because I'm so happy. I was able to get this for a couple of soul. And I was so excited because as the months passed, um, the, the, this you know, Catalina Whales got super popular. And also the value of soul increased before this winter. And so at one point in time, I had actually 10 x my money as far as value uh, on this NFT. And then it happened. I lost my dear beloved whale and I lost all the value, the 10X. You see what happened was I was anonymously airdropped a reward for being a larger soul holder. The fraudulent NFT that came right into my wallet, the wallet that I held the the Catalina whale into, uh, had this reward. And it said, basically, you know, just hook hook up this wallet to this website and you're gonna be able to get this reward like a dummy, absolute dummy. I clicked and I connected my wallet. I did not read the transaction data like a dummy again. And I ended up losing my Catalina whale in all value because the the, uh, the wallet was cleared by this fraudulent site. So there was no one to report it to, as you know, with NFT, we're in the wild, wild west right now. Um, I couldn't call the police and say, someone stole my Catalina whale, frankly, Did they really even steal it? I mean, I did connect the wallet. Now it was under a pretense, but I actually did transfer it to them, quote unquote, voluntarily. But even if I reported to the police as a fraud or something like that, they probably don't even understand what an NFT is, let alone a Catalina whale. So I learned some lessons that I really want to convey to you because again, I like to think of myself as pretty knowledgeable about blockchain, about digital wallets. I teach it in my course, Metaverse Beginnings. Um, But beware of these anonymously airdropped NFTs, your wallets. If you're new to the NFT game, you get stoked, you start buying, you know, uh, blue chip NFTs, and then they start getting your wallet addresses and these fraudsters send you these anonymous uh, NFTs. A lot of times they look real. They look like, oh gosh, I just got a VFriend and now I got a VFriend 2 free. Oh, cool. That's great. There actually is a VFriend 2, but you'll see these things. And if you do not know where they came from, uh, the first step is to do some research. And the first thing I do is go to Discord, go to the collection from which uh, this project may have stemmed. And I do some research in the Scam Alert channel. Usually there's a Scam Alert channel. Try to find out if this is a known scam. I'll do some research online. If at the end of my research, I either prove it's a scam or I do not know what the heck this anonymous NFT uh, is, then I will immediately send it to a trash wallet. Everyone should have a trash digital wallet. You can either create yourself or what I've done, a a guy gave me an address to his trash wallet. And so I send all my uh, defective and fraudulent NFTs immediately to this wallet. That way I don't even have the the specter of uh, a wallet clear. Um, And then of course, the biggest one, please, and I'm pleading because I made this mistake. Read every single time you assign in with your digital wallet, you connect to a website, you do a transaction like a buy, a sale, or you put in a bid. Make sure you read the transition text that comes with that wallet interaction with the website. Read it fully. Sometimes the fraudsters actually have decently legalese type uh, text in these uh, transmissions. But most of the time, you'll be able to detect when there's a fraud. Either it won't be text or it'll be all like misspellings and, and bad English or bad whatever language you're looking at it in. And you'll be able to say, this is, you know, this is scary. I'm not going to deal with this. 
And, and also remember, when in doubt, when if you ever are in doubt about you know, transferring, signing up to a website, doing a transaction, just don't do it. You can always pause. You can always go on Discord, ask people's advice, figure it out. Rarely are you going to be airdropped aboard Ape Yacht Club and and you know receive this board ape and go, oh wow, that's great. Most of the time, anything that's anonymously airdropped to you is going to be fraud. So do not fall for that trick. And if you're unsure of a transaction, do don't do it, or you're gonna end up like me, losing a bunch of money and you know, being very sad. <laughs> so those are my NFT no-nos for today. For more tips on NFT minting, buying, and selling or just making money in the metaverse, be sure and get my free online course. It's called Metaverse Beginnings. And if you sign up for Metaverse Beginnings right now, you're not only going to get a bunch of videos, a WhatsApp community that you can rely on to give you some resources on making money in the metaverse, but also I've thrown in a free t-shirt. So if you are in the mood to join a community where we're all devoted together to figuring out this metaverse and how we make money in it, please join my Metaverse Beginnings. Um, and here's the QR code right here. So you could, if you want to take a screenshot real quick of that, you can see my QR code for Metaverse Beginnings. Yeah, please join that. And then finally, if you just aren't able to get this uh, QR code, then you can move to, to, you could always hit me up on Twitter at Ian Corzine. That's Twitter at Ian Corzine, I-A-N-C-O-R-Z-I-N-E. Thank you so much for the time of this presentation. And I'm so happy to be a keynote presentation today. This is an awesome seminar. Uh, and I'm happy to answer any questions that are out there, if, if there are any. All right. First of all, thanks again for an amazing presentation. Uh, it was so Thank entertaining you. and so informational, right? So you, you provided you. us with amazing value. Uh, and everybody like who is uh, building new products in this web space should take in account and also like who is investor because uh, also I, I i myself got trapped in one of these camps uh, uh, one year ago <laughs> so it's very difficult right you think that you know everything but this yes. is so so smart they are always coming out with these new ways right so it's it's crazy <laughs> so yeah, yeah, it's so true. I, I I couldn't believe it. I called my one of my best NFT friends and I said, I cannot believe I fell victim for a wallet clear. I feel like such an idiot. I know it's happened to a lot of people out there, and I just want to assure them that it happens to all of us. So obviously, once you learn your lesson, you learn your lesson. But uh, just again, heed those rules, read those transactions, don't interact with anonymously airdropped NFTs. Yeah, and uh, I will be like going in with the first question, and I will also want to say that uh, you got you can type any question in our mutual chat inside oh, the decentralized, and I will read them out. But my first question I will start out would be, what would be your recommendations for the new projects which are starting up? So you said that SEC is kind of uh, might make regulations harder and etc. So to avoid all the problems while raising funds for NFT projects or starting over. So what will be your yes. couple recommendations for the newcomers? Well, I think what the, the key point is, and I'm going to answer this understanding that there's the law that's applicable right now, and that there's also a lot of rules that are not in place. But the bottom line is to emphasize the art whenever you're creating an NFT project. The reason why NFTs themselves right now are not considered securities that are regulated by the SEC is because they're like digital collectibles. Fr frankly, in my online course, Metaverse Mastery and Metaverse Beginnings, I refer to NFTs as digital collectibles. And I do that purposely because I wanna make sure that people understand that the purpose of these collectibles is the fun of the collectible themselves. Yes, if they increase in value, great. But no one who was an initial board Ape Yacht Club holder probably thought it would go up to 250, 300, $500,000. People bought it because they thought it was cool. So if you're an NFT project yeah. owner to avoid that whole issue about securities and whether or not you got to co comply, just make sure that you emphasize the art. This is a project that people should buy into because they want to be part of your community. They want to enjoy the art that is. So I'm, I'm thinking about a, a lot of different projects. I mentioned Catalina Wales. Obviously, B Friends is the same. They're emphasizing their art or their utility. If you do that, you're never going to have problems with the law. Yes, yes, totally agree. And uh, thanks for the uh, recommendations. And yes. just want to uh, read out uh, Carl wrote in the chat that um, 
token uh, to a trash wallet, something more than you would expect. So what will be like oh. the solution, right? So so we all get spam uh, spam tokens uh, on yes. our wallets. So yes. yeah, feedback on that. I'm sorry. What did you say, Noda? Yeah, yeah. If you can comment on that, like oh uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, a, a, you know, a trash wallet, is, as Noto talks about, is, is is a wallet where we send all the anonymous NFTs. Listen, you don't have to have these NFT or these anonymous NFTs airdrop to a trash wallet. It just for a lot of us, it is the best way not to ever get accidentally scammed or trapped. So, and we also don't know what the future is for these anonymous NFTs. They're going to get more and more sophisticated. There may be ones where you click on them within your OpenSea collection, and that's somehow going to transmit some information. We don't know yet. So that's why I say get them out of your wallets immediately. So you can create a trash wallet by just like going on MetaMask and actually creating an, a wallet. It's very easy. You have hundreds, thousands of wallets if you want. Labeling it trash and then making sure that address is in a place that's safe that you, where you keep it. And then every time you receive one of these anonymous BS NFTs, just click send and send it to that wallet and then never access that wallet again. So uh, that works the same with Soul. If you're doing Magic Eden trades, uh, always having that trash wallet. In my case, I think it's a great way to keep your collections organized and to try to just push away any of that fraud. Sure, totally agree. And thank, thanks for your feedback uh, on that topic. And uh, let's wait for uh, um, one more question. So okay. is writing one more question. Uh, is there any dangers associate, uh, associated with doing uh, the transfer to trash wallet such, a, uh, such as- Oh yeah. Yeah, there is, yeah, so. Yeah, there is. I mean, you're gonna have a gas fee attended to it. Now, if you're doing solo ones, you don't really have to worry about it. It's, it's very minimal. But yeah, I think it would wait uh, for my gas to be down before I do the transaction. You don't wanna be like spending five bucks or worse, 25 <laughs> sure. bucks to send it to a trash wallet. But yes, you're gonna have to face that. And you know, I will say this, OpenSea, one of the, you know, obviously the top NFT marketplaces is doing their best. I don't know if you've seen this, but if you go into your collection in OpenSea right now, you'll see a hidden, a little yes. tab. And that actually is where they stuff these anonymous NFTs in this little hidden portion. Uh, so they are trying to get it out of there. And then also you'll see from time to time, I'll have an NFT pop up in my collection. And then like two days later, it'll say NFT has been transferred out. So the marketplaces are aware of this. They're trying to do their best. But um, uh, I like if, 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 again, if it's sitting there for a while, I like to get it out. And I'm not, I don't have a problem if I pay $3 in gas just to get this thing out. I lost like yeah. $2,000 on uh, safe, right? <laughs> my favorite NFT. I don't want to do that again. Yeah. And uh, I think we have time for one more last question. Uh, sure. it's, a, it's, it's a great question uh, from our auditory is that would you think uh, working outside of the US uh, could be better for the regulatory purposes, like um, from absolutely. legal point of view, right? So basically imagine absolutely. you're working from- Yes, absolutely, so, I do. I, it, I think we're gonna see some of the most stringent regulations when it comes to cryptocurrency and NFTs coming out of America. The, uh, President Biden actually issued an executive order in March of this year, basically saying, we want as a country to get ahead of this and by the end of the year, which, by the way, is in a couple of months, he wants legislation on the table to regulate not only uh, cryptocurrency, stable coins, but NFTs. So I don't know. You know, you know how Congress works. It's very slow. But the point of it is, is America is has a I was going to use a bad word, but they have a, a, a pension for regulating this this uh, space. So, yes, if you have the ability uh, to do a lot of your trades, to, to start your project in Puerto Rico or um, uh, obviously in Asia somewhere, um, that's probably the best. That's probably going to be the, your best bet for avoiding law issues. Yeah, that's uh, that's interesting. And also, uh, it's interesting to um, know what about like kind of if I'm American and I want to invest in NFTs or fund some project, right? So lots yes. of people have a question like, would I be in any risk or like if I'm a US citizen, right? So can you can you tell us yeah. more about it? And then we will yeah. close. I mean, I think the biggest risk right now is not so much. I mean, fractionalization is an issue. We talked about that in today's talk. If you're doing yes. a fractionalization project, you may be regulated as security, but most people aren't doing that. So your real issue is capital gains. If you're an American citizen, you know, one of the problems is cashing out. You know, you, you got your board ape or two ETH 
And then a year and a half later, it's worth $300,000. You want to cash that out. That's a big problem because <laughs> you're going to pay a lot of uh, short-term in that case, or maybe a little long-term capital gains taxes, which could amount to 20 or 30%. So I think for Americans, what I always do in my, in my course, Metaverse Mastery, I always talk about keep, you know, playing the game for cryptocurrency, keeping your money in crypto and not cashing out. You know, in the next few years, crypto is going to be an actual currency. I make that joke because we really do a lot of transactions right now with cryptocurrency, but in the next few years, we will. So keeping your money in the game and not cashing out and having to pay taxes, whether you're an American citizen or a French citizen or, you know, a, a Japanese citizen is probably your best bet because what will end up happening is you'll have profits. You'll be doing well, but you're going to be able to use that money in the systems to buy services, to buy products and then not have to pay taxes on it. So I think that the best thing right now, and I'm encouraging all of my community in Metaverse Beginnings to keep their money in the system. Let's make some money, incremental money on our NFTs, on our virtual land, which I'm a big proponent about. And then once you once you can catch it, once you make a sale, just make sure that that ETH that you made on that thing, that's stuffed. I wouldn't move it to stable coins just yet. I would actually leave it as ETH, let that increase in value, and then buy more and more NFTs with that. Don't cash out if you can possibly uh, afford to. Sure. So yeah, it's that's a, that's amazing. Great opening of our Winter Conference. Thanks, Ian, yeah. for joining me.